Welcome to the cinematic journey that is Stage a Coach, a 1939 classic that not only stands as a milestone in the Western genre, but also marks the beginning of a legendary collaboration between director John Ford and actor John Wayne. Before we delve into the random facts that make this film a timeless piece of Hollywood history, consider this. What classic Hollywood actor from this movie left an indelible mark on your cinematic preferences? Was it the rugged presence of John Wayne or another captivating performer? Stage a coach unfolds against the backdrop of the American West, where disparate individuals find themselves sharing a perilous stage a coach ride through dangerous territory. As the wheels turn, so does the narrative, weaving a tale of suspense, camaraderie, and self-discovery. The film's genius lies not just in its thrilling plot, but in the nuanced performances that elevate it beyond the typical Western fare. Now, have you ever experienced a moment in your life when Stagecoach left its mark? Perhaps it stirred a sense of adventure or sparked a fascination with the Old West. Share your personal stories and reflections on how this cinematic gem has inspired or impacted you. As we explore intriguing tidbits about the making of Stage a Coach, we invite you to reflect on your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this iconic movie. Whether it's a vivid recollection or a subtle influence, we'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. And now, let's ride into the captivating world of Stage a Coach where Western landscapes and compelling characters converge to create a film that has left an enduring legacy. Stay tuned for fascinating facts that add depth to this cinematic masterpiece. In the making of the 1939 film, John Ford, the director, employed a unique approach to draw authentic emotions from John Wayne, who played the Ringo Kid. Ford deliberately suggested the name of an unsuitable actor, Lloyd Nolan, to Wayne, intending to provoke a response. Throughout filming, Ford consistently undermined Wayne, employing psychological tactics to strip away intimidation and elicit genuine emotions. This challenging atmosphere aimed to push Wayne to perform convincingly alongside seasoned professionals like Thomas Mitchell. The movie's iconic landscapes were captured in Monument Valley, presenting a challenge for directors due to difficulties in filming subtle cloud formations. John Ford struggled with this until he found a solution after filming with the Navy during World War II. His experience led him to use infrared film stock, introducing the dramatic skies seen in later films like Fort Apache. Amidst the serious on-screen dynamics, an off-camera moment involving Louise Platt, who portrayed Mrs. Lucy Mallory, adds a touch of humor. Platt, witnessing John Wayne on set, remarked to Claire Trevor about the unexpected appreciation for Wayne's physique, stating, I think he has the most beautiful buttocks I have ever seen. These behind-the-scenes aspects provide intriguing insights into the unique dynamics and challenges faced during the production of the film, shaping the final product that has stood the test of time. John Ford's cinematic journey through Monument Valley, Arizona began with the 1939 film. This iconic location set the stage for a series of Western classics, including My Darling Clementine, Ford Apache, and The Searchers. Monument Valley's rugged landscapes became synonymous with Ford's westerns, shaping the backdrop for tales of frontier life and adventure. Notably, the film's production left a lasting impact on the local Navajo population. Facing economic challenges, the community found an unexpected source of livelihood as they portrayed Apaches in the movie. Hundreds of locals secured jobs as extras and handymen, experiencing a significant boost in their economic fortunes. Behind the scenes, the film introduced a daring stunt known as the Running W. This technique, while effective in creating intense chase sequences, faced criticism due to its impact on horses. The wires attached to a metal post, causing horses to fall violently, resulted in injuries and even fatalities. The controversial method was eventually discontinued, following widespread complaints from both within and outside the film industry. As we delve into the layers of Stage a Coach, the synergy between Ford's choice of Monument Valley and the economic upliftment of the local community adds a unique dimension to the film's legacy. Simultaneously, the use of innovative yet controversial techniques sheds light on the challenges faced during its production, contributing to the intricate tapestry of this timeless classic. John Ford's vision for the 1939 Western film involved overcoming various challenges, including a daring river crossing scene with the stage coach. Impressed by Yakima Canut's innovative solution to shoot the sequence safely, 
Ford granted him creative control over all stunts in the film. This decision marked a pivotal moment, shaping the action sequences that would become synonymous with Ford's cinematic style. Interestingly, the film faced scrutiny from the Breen office, Hollywood's censorship authority. Dudley Nichols' initial treatment, which portrayed the prostitute Dallas, Doc Boone's constant drunkenness, the Ringo Kid's thirst for revenge, and the Marshal's involvement in deaths, was rejected. Nichols revised the script to align with Breen office suggestions, allowing the production to proceed without further objections. This behind-the-scenes negotiation reflects the delicate balance filmmakers navigated in adhering to industry standards while crafting a compelling narrative. It's worth noting that years later, in 1962, John Wayne, John Carradine, and Andy Devine, all featured in Ford's 1939 classic, reunited for another Western, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. This reunion speaks to the enduring collaborations and relationships forged during the making of Stage a Coach. In exploring these facets of the film's production, from innovative stunt direction to navigating censorship, we gain insight into the complexities behind this enduring Western classic. The choices made behind the scenes not only shaped the narrative, but also influenced the trajectories of the careers involved, showcasing the intricacies of filmmaking in the golden age of Hollywood. In 1939, Monument Valley's rugged landscapes became the iconic backdrop for a groundbreaking Western film. Before stage a coach, no paved roads wound through this remote location until the 1950s. John Ford, the director, discovered it thanks to Harry Gooding who presented over 100 photos of the valley, emphasizing its isolation from studio interference. Set against the historical backdrop of Lordsburg, New Mexico, the film's events unfold around 1880. A Republican convention in Chicago serves as a curious detail, possibly pointing to the one in 1868 or 1880. The timing aligns with Geronimo's activities, despite some historical discrepancies. A notable aspect involves John Wayne's journey to stardom. In the 1930s, Ford advised Wayne to wait until he was ready as an actor. However, Ford strategically cast Wayne in stage a coach, aiming to propel him into the limelight. The pivotal scene where Wayne, as the Ringo Kid, stops the stage coach with his Winchester rifle marks the zenith of this effort. In the unforgiving landscape of Monument Valley, the film not only shaped cinematic history but also influenced Wayne's trajectory in the industry. A melding of historical nuances and strategic casting choices showcases the intricate tapestry woven in the making of this enduring Western classic. As the cinematic curtains gently draw to a close, we bid adieu to the timeless journey we embarked upon with the iconic tale that unfolded on the silver screen in 1939. This celluloid odyssey, a testament to the artistry of storytelling, invites us to traverse the vast landscapes of our own emotions. Whether it be the thundering hooves echoing through Monument Valley or the quiet moments that linger in the recesses of our hearts, stage a coach whispers to the soul with the eloquence only a classic can muster. In the dimming light of the projector, consider the threads that connect you to this cinematic masterpiece. Was it the rugged camaraderie of unlikely companions? The dust-kissed cinematography that painted the West in hues of sepia and grit? Or perhaps, the symphony of John Ford's direction orchestrating a symphony of death destinies entwined. Now, as the credits roll, we beckon you to share your personal echoes of stage a coach. What memories does this celluloid relic evoke in the corridors of your mind? Is it a nostalgic dance with the shadows of a bygone era or a recent revelation that's left an indelible mark? Your reflections add a unique brushstroke to the canvas of this cinematic saga, enriching the collective experience that spans generations. So, lend us your whispers. Speak of your favorite scenes, the characters who found a home in the theater of your thoughts, or the emotions that lingered long after the credits faded. As we gather around the proverbial campfire of shared memories, let Stage a Coach be not just a movie but a conversation, an ode to the timeless power of storytelling that unites us all. Thank you for embarking on this celluloid journey with us. Your time and reflections are cherished, for it's in these shared narratives that the magic of Stage a Coach continues to thrive. Until we meet again in the vast expanse of cinematic dreams, happy trails, dear reader, 